CB Super here. Uh, today I'm going to go over a wiggle-like effect. It's um, There's actually two effects we could use. One of them is the shake modifier, which is the one we're going to be going over today. And the other is the perturb modifier, which I'm going to go over in a separate video just because there are a few things that are different about the two. On screen you'll see that I have a demo going, and that is uh, the shake modifier doing just several different things at once. If you come from After Effects, and you were you maybe you've been searching around the internet trying to find does DaVinci have a wiggle? Um, it does, and the shake pretty much fits that bill. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to create a new Fusion compound, and I'm going to show you how to use it really quickly. Okay, so inside of Fusion, um, we have a brand new Fusion comp with nothing inside of it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create something to wiggle. So I'm going to create an ellipse background, and I'm going to color this red. And I'm just going to show you what this does really quickly. So I'm going to size this down just a little bit, just so it's somewhat round. Uh, and one thing about the ellipse, and any mask for that matter, is uh, you'll notice that this center parameter is what drives the position. So if we were to animate this position, uh, we could animate that over time. Uh, but instead, we're going to use a shake modifier. So if you just right click on the, the actual word center, and then come down to modify and over here on the left you'll see shake we we'll click on that and we're going to go ahead and press the space bar to, to preview that and you notice that it's already doing its movement and so if that's all you were looking for i mean it's that simple um, but you can jump over here to the modifiers tab you can actually play with some of the parameters so reseed and random seed is going to be super important but we'll go over that here in a little bit uh, first i'll talk about smoothness Think of smoothness as kind of the speed for the animation. If I turn it up, the animation is going to be a little bit slow, a little smoother. If I turn it down, it's going to be very fast and very violent. Uh, we can also kind of lock down the movement. The closer to the center or to 0.5 you are, the more um, confined that movement is going to be. So you can get a really cool like shake. Um, and, and that's exactly the way that I use it most of the time is I'll lock down the parameters. You can also uncheck this lock XY, and it's going to give you a little bit more control over the position um, on the screen that you want it to be. Obviously, if, if this is the X and we go to the minimums, uh, it's going to keep it all the way over to the left and vice versa if we uh, drive it all the way to the right. Uh, same with the X and the Y. You can see that kind of opens up the parameters. But if you just leave it, but if you turn it um, as, as it comes, just the way that it is, like it's gonna now be able to travel pretty much the entire width and height of the screen. I usually leave it locked just because the way that I use the shake modifier, uh, this usually fits most of my needs. So you probably notice that there's no like on or off button. Uh, you could turn smoothness up. Now you'll notice that 25 is as high as it goes and that slows it down, but it doesn't slow it down to a stop. You could also take this up to like 10,000 if you wanted to. Um, and that'll pretty much slow it down to, to the point where it's not really moving. Um, you could do that. That's probably not the way that I would do it. All right, so if you're looking for a good way to turn this on and off, one way you could do this would actually be, um, let's go ahead and set these to the center of 0.5 and 0.5. And you'll notice that when we're at 0.5, it doesn't move at all. So if we go ahead and uh, animate this, and then we go one frame forward and we open it up a little bit. And now maybe we want to go to frame 70 and we'll set some keyframes, go one more frame and we'll come over here and we'll go 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And now you can see that we've actually kind of, uh, we've set our own keyframes for turning it on and turning it off. So that's just one way that you could turn it on and off. You could also uh, use the keyframe editor, which we'll show here in a few minutes to turn it on and off. But uh, I, I prefer to do it this way because it gives you a little bit more freedom. You can have several of these uh, turn on and off in the same uh, fusion composition timeline. So that's pretty powerful. Um, but it's not just for moving um, the position. We can also do things like you might have seen, you might have noticed in the demo that we actually have uh, different parameters that are being modified by the shake. So say we want to um, modify the width and the height, we can also modify the modify it with a shake. We can go to the height, modify that with a shake. Now one thing you'll notice that if we leave it like this, it's just going to go up and it's just going to go down. And that's because these two, the width and the height, are running at the exact same seed. If you want to get even more randomization out of that, 
You can actually come over here, double click on the height and reseed it, and then double click on the width and reseed it. And now they're gonna be running at completely different seeds. You can also come over here and reseed the center. And now you'll notice that everything is gonna be moving at different seeds. So nothing is gonna feel like it's, uh, I don't know, kind of static or um, maybe orchestrated moving. This is gonna be a little bit more random now. So pretty much almost any value over here can be modified with the shake. You can come over to the angle, you can modify this with the shake. Uh, you can come to the center, you can modify. You can even modify these, although I wouldn't necessarily play around with that too much. You could modify, you could change the, the border width. You could, if you want it to be a solid, say, you could change the border width. Um, and I actually did that a little bit in the demo. I, you can also change the color, which is nice. Um, now, you wouldn't necessarily change it. You would change it in the background, and that's why we use the background node, because if I come over here and I um, modify these with a shake, uh, just remember to come over here and reseed each of these colors. Um, otherwise, it's, they're gonna they're gonna operate in the exact same seed, and you're just gonna get like a white and black change, and that's it. So now you can see that um, you know not only are we getting size, center, uh, position, we're also getting a difference in color, and these are just random, and it's going to be shaking pretty much in in a completely uncontrollable manner. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the shake is more um, simulation than anything else. It's it, you'll notice it's not leaving behind any of its own keyframes. So you're not going to have quite as much control over this animation, but it's kind of a fire and forget. Um, the shake really only works well when you actually need a truly random thing. Uh, but it's not just for, you know, animating ellipses. We can also use this to bring in some footage. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a transform node. And the transform node is the node that we're actually going to be doing all of the, uh, the shaking with. So if I come over to the center on the transform and I just modify this with a shake, and I'm definitely going to want to come over into the modifiers because you'll notice right now that this is just, you know, like it's a really, really drastic shake and that's not what we're looking for. We're actually going to want to probably bring this down close to 0.5 uh, just to minimize the distance that it's going to shake. I like to drop the smoothness all the way down just to get like a really violent shake. Now there's two ways I can control this. Well first off actually we'll notice that we have these big gaps over here on the side of the frame and you can come over here to tools and with edges just go ahead and hit mirror and that's going to for the most part it's going to kind of fake a fix that will usually do good enough as long as the background is quite plain. Uh, also, nothing can nothing in the foreground can really intersect it. Otherwise, the illusion is going to pretty much be um, the gig is going to be up. Because if you start to uh, zoom out, you'll see that it's really just mirrored up here. And so, if you get to the point where you start seeing something, um, then you're going to have to probably do a resize as opposed to uh, just a mirror. But um, for most intense purposes, this is going to work just fine. Just to add like a little bit of shake to it. All right, let's say that we want to start this at 70 and we want it to end at frame 80. There's two ways that we can turn this on and off. Um, the first way that we did earlier was we just animated these minimums and maximums to turn it off. And that works. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, so all I have to do is if I want to turn these on and off and then I can just go forward one frame. 0.5 and 0.5. And then maybe I want to come over to 80. I'm going to add some keyframes here just to like keep that, uh, keep those parameters going. And then go one more. And then uh, now I can do 0.5 and 0.5. And essentially what that's going to do is that's just going to turn it on and off right where we want it to turn on and off. And you can do that several times down here. You can even use the, the editing rule of threes where you have everything come on and off three times and no more. Um, Let's say we, we don't like that. Let's say we want to do something a little bit different. There's another way you can turn that on and off, and it's not always the preferred way, but it does work. Uh, and, you, and sometimes it might even work a little bit better. If you come over to the keyframe editor, get rid of the inspector for just a little bit. Let's make just a little bit of room here. If I hit zoom to fit, um, you'll notice that uh, transform has its own layer. So if I come through here, you'll notice that it's just playing continuously while, ever, while it's on that layer. One thing I can do is I can actually shorten this layer. So now it's only gonna shake when it crosses over that layer and then it's gonna stop. 
So that's another way that you can have a little bit more control over your actual nodes. You can turn the nodes on and off at will. Um, again, uh, I kind of prefer to do it the other way, but if you're looking for another, an alternative way, that is one way to do it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Um, that's just one way that you can get some nice random movements. And uh, the nice thing about the shake modifier is that you can pretty much you can you can pretty much randomize any um, numerical uh, animatable characteristic of almost any node. All right, it, it's not just for the transform node. Uh, you can use it. Uh, we showed how you could use it in the background nodes um, to animate different colors. You could. Uh, uh, if I pull up uh, a mask here, uh, one thing to note is that you could you could animate this width, this height, the corner radius, the center, uh, the border width, the soft edge. I mean, you could just really, really throw down some really crazy animations if you wanted to. Um, the the world is pretty much your oyster when it comes to uh, just random animations to make things. You know, and somewhere where that might be cool is like you know in a in a music video or something where you're just trying to animate a bunch of different shapes onto the screen just to get some kind of weird psychedelic effect. Um, so play around with it. Uh, I hope this helped you guys. Um, maybe you guys can find some other uses that I haven't even thought of in there. And uh, if you guys like this video, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe and make sure to hit that bell notification and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.